Today, we're gonna talk about how we lost $15,000 on a flip with one mistake. But we'd also like to know if you think that was the ethical $15,000. Because it's all learning, it's worth it. Now, let's take you to the job site where that actually happened. Oh yeah, and that one's called the YouTube flip. Oh, and be sure to watch to the end for five takeaways when you're investing in real estate. Does anybody see anything wrong in this picture? I see something wrong in this picture. Why? Because I know my garage door just did this. Vandalism. <laughs> but I have to tell myself that's the nature of business. Mistakes happen. Now we're gonna touch on this $15,000 mistake. So here's the thing. The sewer line that goes from just under that window right there, right about to this little cap right here, needed to be replaced. There are two options. And because of these two options, you're gonna see exactly where the mistake was. Option number one was to do what's called a trenchless pipe replacement, where basically they dig a hole on this side, they dig a hole on that side, so they're kind of making like two pits, not trenches, and then pull a liner through the existing drain. That would have cost about $5,500, and it would have hooked up to the original drain system in the house, problem would have been solved, would have never known about it. So I come up with this brilliant idea that, well, wait a minute, if we're gonna spend 5,500 bucks on a trenchless sewer line right here, that's gonna mess up the landscaping and the concrete anyway that used to be there, why don't we just do it in-house? And we'll put a brand new ABS line in, which is higher quality anyway, and we could probably do it for less money. Well, I was right. We were able to do the ABS line for less money. However, when we went to tie in, this is where the ethical dilemma comes in. When we came right about to this point, this is what a real sewer replacement looks like, not a trench lift. Check out what the old pipe looks like, the old iron. The whole bottom's missing. To tie into the house's main drains, we realized that the iron pipes that were in there had their bottoms rusted out of the bottom, which basically means the plumbing system for the house was a fancy septic system. It was all leaching into the ground anytime somebody flushed the toilet. We don't even know how much was actually making it out of the house. So what did that mean Kevin thought to do? Well, let's just replace all the drains. And then as soon as we got to realizing, oh, well, let's just replace all the drains, which wasn't in the initial budget, of course, then we got to thinking, well, wait a minute. While we're replacing all the drains, why don't we just replace all the plumbing supply lines too. And, and then we realized, oh, well, wait a minute. If we're replacing the drains and we're replacing the copper supply lines, that means the piping vents aren't the right size to code anymore. And there aren't enough clean outs in the house. So we're gonna have to bring those up to code as well. So all in all, the idea to save maybe a thousand dollars by not outsourcing this to a trenchless company that would have just hooked up to this old sewage system. And I would have never known about the stuff in the inside. And really nobody would have probably ever experienced a problem. We took it to the next level. So basically where we wanted to save about a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars, we 10 x it and put a minus sign in front of that and turned it into about a negative $15,000 project. We had to cut the concrete, we had to trench, we had to redo the vents, redo the piping, re-pour the concrete, make sure rebar was in the concrete before pouring it, and then actually be there with the mixer truck that costs $2 a minute. And that stops the rest of the project from being able to move disaster. So that's where I say there's sometimes an ethical dilemma when it comes to flips. If I'm gonna own this house forever, I want this new stuff. I want it new. And that's kind of how I feel when I'm gonna sell a product to a buyer that might live there forever. It should be done right. And if that means I didn't budget in the fact that all the drains were crap and all this was crap, well I guess that's my fault. But I'm not gonna learn about a problem like that and then leave it for somebody. That'd be messed up. Does a lot of me wish the trenchless people just hooked it up and they probably wouldn't have said anything? Maybe they wouldn't have even realized. But this is the ethically right move. Let me know what you think in the comments because this is a little bit of a struggle. Still a little conflicted on it. So I guess in theory, if the trenchless option were done and it was hooked up with a large enough sleeve, it could have in theory covered any of the rotting that was existing. I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. But you know what I take away from this? And it's kind of something I take away almost every single day in construction. Is first of all, flips suck. Better yet, doing flips right sucks. I think the first takeaway from this lesson is that when you're investing in real estate and you're doing a renovation project, know that as soon as you touch one thing, 
the next one to two things around it are bound to break. If you're gonna touch the sewer line, the rest of the sewer line's probably gonna break and the water lines are probably gonna break. Maybe you try not to touch the sewer line, if at all possible, and you try to preserve it or bandage it to make it as good as possible so that you can start using the property as an investment. Now, you're not disclosing that you didn't bandage the property. So it's not like you'd be deceiving anybody by doing a bandage like a sleeve repair, but you're saving the effort of going in and making it all brand new, which nobody's really expecting anyway. It's a 1957 house in this example. Takeaway number two, know when to subcontract something that's a specialty job that could easily be done by that one sub trade rather than thinking, well, we'll just do it. Although I will say, if you want to learn the absolute most possible about construction, then just do everything. But then you suffer the consequences, like this 15K over here. Takeaway number three, don't kill yourself when you make mistakes. You're always gonna make mistakes in everything you do, but guess what? I just learned a massive lesson on this property, and even though it feels like a $15,000 loss, the fact that I learned to watch for this in the future and I can now advise clients on preventing this possibility from happening in the future, or being better with my numbers in the future is worth so much more than 15K, especially when I extrapolate that over the number of deals we're gonna be doing in the future. I mean, I'm not just talking about just doing one of these deals and then, ah, oh, darn, I lost 15K and that's it. I'm talking about doing hundreds of these. Mistake number four, by far not learning from people that you should learn from. There are so many people out there that'll give you advice and I take in so much advice yet Sometimes I just choose not to listen to it. Big mistake. Should have done the trench list. Should have done it, didn't do it. Mistake or takeaway number five, get everything in detailed writing. And I'm not just saying get stuff in writing because if somebody walks up and shakes your hand and says 3,000 bucks to retile your shower, it's just as good as a piece of paper telling you retile your shower $3,000. But that is the worthless part. You need detail. It's gotta have lots of detail. How high is the shower tile going? Is it stopping a foot under the wall or all the way? What kind of trim is being used on the edge of the tile? Is it just gonna be the mortar or are we gonna have a nice stainless steel edge? What about soap boxes or benches? There's so much to learn. But every time you do a project, take more away and add detail to those contracts. But I also do that to protect myself because if I, either as a real estate agent or a contractor or whatever, tell a client I'm going to do something, if I left out the detail, I cover the cost for what I forgot to cover up a lack of clarity. So for example, if a client wants a shower tiled all the way to the ceiling, but I thought we were only gonna shower tile at seven feet up, but I didn't say it in the paperwork, they're gonna get tiled to the ceiling because it's my fault for not clarifying as the contractor. Not all contractors work that way though. You know, you get people out there that are like, no, 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 you gotta put the customer in their place. That's the biggest crap I've ever heard in my life. You want repeat business and referrals, not that one paycheck.